You can show a toe to let your hair up. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you not hot. It's, it's, it's a little warm. It gets a little cooler when you put your hair up. You know what I'm saying? But you don't need to go all out, ladies. And men, come on now. Come on, help a sister out. Put on a longer sleeve shirt. You know what I'm saying? We have to take care of each other. Like the first night, Eliana was talking so much about modesty. So you know, I don't, I don't want to run into it again. <laughs> Let me go back to my job. <laughs> so, we know that he saw her with purity. What the words that came out of his mouth were like, that's the flesh of my flesh, that's the blood of my blood. Like, he didn't say that's. That's my body, like, like you know, that's my body. But he looked at her like, "Well, that's the body that that unifies us." Okay, oh, you oh. have a lot of questions. I think this is gonna turn into Q and A. I'm sorry. Uh, was like, was Adam like, "Oh, you have to put clothes on. Stop showing yourself." No, that's a little rude. Oh, that's when you might just give a left hook. The beautiful way. That was the most beautiful, beautiful way ever. Well, you can. All right. Brother, Emmanuel, Ma don't, don't imagine, really imagine this, okay? Imagine I'm wearing something that's not modest. <laughs> don't be looking at me like that. I'm about to suck all alone. <laughs> what would you say to me if I was really immodest? Me knowing you the way I know you. No, you can't say it the way you say it to me in a regular basis. Not like that. But how like if you didn't know me and you just saw me walking down the street and you you just like the spirit of the Lord was just moving you to say something to me. What would you say? Well I think um like you said it you said it perfectly before, you know. You would tell you would tell the woman, in this case Erica, you know. There's no need. <laughs> there's no need to, to <laughs> there's no need to be dressed like that. You know, you're beautiful regardless, you know. It's foggy. Next in the room to me. Huh? You're not Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you want to do something else? Okay, come on. I want to add it to you. I want to say much, but I know that um, Ayana spoke about modesty like two weeks ago, but I don't know about um, anybody, any other guys here, but I know for me personally, like, I, I, it's a little, it's more attractive when a, a woman is modest. Like, you feel you feel better, and it just, it, it's more attractive. You don't feel like, why does she need to have all that hanging out? It's just, it looks kind of like nasty sometimes. Just because they have it in my size don't mean they gotta wear it. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, brother? I'm, I'm just gonna answer all your questions right now before I get into it. Oh no, what he said, like, you, if a girl dresses like, like modest, you know, like not showing anything, like they look, they look more beautiful. Like, not that. Oh, I wanna, you know, hit that or whatever. Just like, oh, she's beautiful. That's real though. That's real. Yeah, she's beautiful. That's <laughs> because what are you telling him, guy? He just wants to hit that. You really want that from my God? Ladies in here, raise your hand if you just really want that. Because if this is really all for nothing, then you're really sitting here all for nothing. And that's the reality. Don't sit here and you're not gonna take this in. Because then that's really spitting on our Lord, and I take that seriously. And I don't know how many of y'all are, are really coming here for the love of Christ, but seriously, this stuff is real. He just said, when he sees a girl in a different manner, dressed in a different way, it's looking like, wow, I just want to hit that. You become an object. <clears throat> I don't want to be sexy. I'm not ready for sex yet. I want my man to see me fully clothed so that when that day comes, he can see what's so coming. <laughs> 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 he can see what the low made. Este basilica del Señor primero. And I'm going to respect my, my Lord and myself for my honeycomb. Amen. Amen. That's right, brother. But love completely, like, you know, we are the image. Like, before the fall, Adam and Eve were the image of our Lord, our true Lord. They were made to be fertile. So the love of the Father and His Son was so beautiful. Just shut it down, sister. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but it's just the people back there. Um, the love of Adam and Eve were so beautiful. The love between a man and a woman is so beautiful that we bring life, which resembles the love in the Father, the Father and the Son, which brings the Holy Spirit. It's a community of persons. I'm not saying like, oh, you know, the Father and Son. You know, it's like their love is so pure and beautiful that it's a communion of three persons. That it's like it's a circle of life-giving love, of a total free, fertile, I mean fruitful, liberating love. Like, man, this is what the Lord gives us to give to one another. I don't know how many of y'all want that, but I want to be free. I want to love without limits. I want to be fruitful. Doesn't mean that, you know, fruitful in that way, but you can be fruitful in many other ways. In total, complete, complete, <laughs> complete. I love that complete. Isn't that crazy? <coughs> How many of us know we lacking a lot of love? Uh, oh, for real? <laughs> we are listening up in this place right now. <laughs> yeah, we do. But we're always lacking. And that's why we're striving for holiness. Just story. So, I had this whole thing planned out, but we were sitting in a whole different way. After what was the sin of Adam and Eve? Somebody tell me. Oh no, it's deeper than that. But you're right in a sense. One, selfishness. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Hmm? That's one of them. Selfishness. Mm, yeah, in a sense. Prideful. If the serpent's telling Eve, you can do what you want. You don't have to do what God wants, because he, what he wants is not good for you. But the Lord made them good. So you're going back on what the Lord is saying. Understand? So pridefulness, to think that you can be above the Lord. How many of us sometimes think we're above him? <laughs> and mind you, we're servers. You gotta, you gotta recognize. We have to recognize we. I love that little boy. <laughs> we have to recognize these things. If we don't recognize these things, how are we gonna allow the change to happen within our hearts? What are you here for if you don't recognize that you need a change? If you don't recognize that your body is beautiful? And what they're telling you on the TV, what they're telling you in the magazines is crap because God does not create garbage. There's a lot of us in here that maybe before we came in here, we was thinking, yo, I need to lose some weight, I need to do this. Okay, it's good to be healthy for the Lord. It's good. You have to check your motives. What are you doing it for? I gotta check myself a lot because I've always been bit my whole life. You feel what I'm saying? So my motives are constantly like, oh, I'm battling it. I'm battling it. What am I looking good for? What am I getting healthy for? What am I eating this vegetable for? Because I don't like vegetables. No, but my friends bought me a bag that says I love veggies, so you know I have to keep to that. <laughs> and you know. Once they fell, Adam and Eve, once they fell, they realized that they were naked. That's like you walking around with a, like a hole in your pants. And like you just feel a breeze, but you don't know you have a hole in your pants. <laughs> and then somebody all of a sudden walks up to you and is like, listen, uh, <coughs> there's like a wide hole in the back of your pants, like just rolling up. I don't know if you know that they're like two separate legs now. <laughs> no, but you realize that you're naked, and what do you want to do? Let's get some fig leaves and do it up real big. What? No, but that's what they had to do. Well, they didn't have clothes like we did, of course. You know, it's original. Like, 
first of all, it has a process to get to like cotton, you know what I mean? <laughs> so what they get, what they did was they, they took fig leaves. You realize you're naked and you want to go put on clothes because what? You're embarrassed. You're ashamed. That's what they felt. They were like, whoa, I'm naked now. Like, I'm looking at you a different way now. Now lust is coming and lust wasn't there before. Like these are new things that are happening to them and they're like getting hit left and right. How am I gonna dodge this now? Like, you know? And they distance themselves from God. <laughs> like when you have that rip in your pants and you don't have pants, and you're like, I'm like four miles from home. You're four miles from home. And you ain't got your wallet on you. You ain't got your credit card. Your, your friend is broke. What are you gonna do? You're gonna try to what? You try to settle for other things. You try to settle like, okay, let me see if I can go over there, pick up a little flower. It looks good, but it ain't gonna last forever. Pick up a box, it's raining. It ain't gonna last forever. <laughs> you got four more, you got three more miles to go, brother. These things people are gonna notice. You're gonna notice and you start feeling worse and worse. And you start looking for more things to hide your, your little slit or whatever it is that you're kind of cover up. Your hands ain't big enough to cover that hole because it's now it's two different pants, like you know, it's two different legs. It's a rip. It's a rupture. You know? So that's what we tend to do. We try to cover it up with different things and knowing that it's not going to be real until you get home. And you find some good pair of pants that's sewn in very well. <laughs> you get something that's durable. It's a lesson learned. But you get hope. You know that you can get home. You ain't going to go, you try to take a shortcut, but you know if you take the shortcut, you might, you know, it might see more people <laughs> to see you with a rip. Or <laughs> you try to, to go to your friend's house, but you and your friend ain't the same size, which is the case with me sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and it's, it's, not, it's not gonna cover it up. It's not it, it's not home, it's not, it's not yours. But when you get to that place, and you get to your room, and you get into that place with the Lord, you know your home. How many of y'all felt when you were praying <coughs> that there was like home? Like you know what you knew it was right. There was something about that that was just like right. <laughs> that fit. That was perfect. That was total. That was freedom. The Lord allows our bodies to go into that freedom. <coughs> Our sexual desires, it can be controlled, it can be mastered. Those desires are not wrong, but there's a time and a place for them. And depending on what the Lord is calling, to, calling you to, which I hope there's a lot of priests in the room that are being called, because <clears throat> we need y'all. Don't be afraid. goodness of the Lord. <laughs> there are a lot of times where I'm thinking, five more minutes, I got five minutes, wow. But I doubt the goodness of the Lord that I think that I'm not going to get out of the situation and I'll break down and I'm just like gone. I isolate myself fully. When we doubt, that's when we start acting out because <laughs> y'all know how to be bad. Y'all know who to call when you want to be bad. <laughs> He's like, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and that's okay, that's real. Because when you, when I see these two guys sitting here, 
You may think they're funny, you may they think that they're like clowning around, but I bet you at the end of the day, these two kids are the only ones that are being real and sitting here saying, yes, I do this, yes, I do that, yes. And they're taking this and they're consuming it. Don't get prideful about it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep it real with the Lord. Stop trying to be like a solid rock. I'm trying to ditch it, you know? You can't ditch the Lord if he's calling you. You know he's calling you. He's calling you out. Take the correction and run with it. You wear something short, all right, Lord, I'm going to get something longer. And even if it's just a little short, like, you know, it's a process, so I get something. You get something that's a little longer, but still short, and, you know, you're working at it. <laughs> because it's hard for us to see the real creation, the beauty of the creation, the beauty, the splendor of God. Some of us have to show a little something to feel a little good. But when the goodness is in the Lord, that's when you start to notice that you need a change. For real. And men up in this room, I'm gonna call y'all out. <laughs> I'm gonna call the ladies out too, but y'all need to stand up. Not, not really stand up, not literally. <laughs> but stand up for these women. These women need y'all, man. I need y'all. I need a brother to be like, Erica, I can carry it. Stop. <laughs> a lot of them do that. And last week, I was like, I'll let them carry it because I'm tired. I was like losing it, but whatever. And then today, I was like a little stubborn. I was like, no, I can't carry my bag. I'll do it. I'll do it. And then I'm thinking like, you know, a man needs to be a man lady. We need to let them open the door for us. Yes, it sounds a little cliche. Oh, we're in the 2000s, it's a new thing. No, boo-boo. It's nice. It feels good when a man opens a door for you. It feels good when a man starts to help you, and it's genuine. It's not like I'm trying to get something out of you. And it's nice when they respect you and tell you enough to know that you need to change. Y'all are a community up in here. Y'all need to get to know each other to help each other grow in holiness. There's a lot of times when my sister Deanna calls me out. And at first I'm a little stubborn, yeah. I'm a little stubborn about it, but you think about it and you're like, yo, the, the Lord gave me voluntad to say yes or no to something. If I know something is wrong, then I'm going to you know, go ahead and think about it, pray about it, see, see what's happening. You guys are a community of people that need to grow in holiness. Stop trying to like push somebody away. <laughs> this isn't no competition of trying to be holier than thou. This isn't a competition to see who's better than the other. Or who looks better than the other. Sorry, I don't know why I'm saying this, but the Lord knows why. <laughs> You guys need to help each other. And if you got a friend in here that you know needs to get checked, check them. In all love, in all holiness. Not check them like a pat down, brother. <laughs> Me and you watch, you, how many times did I stop? <laughs> <laughs> how much you got? Call out the lady. I'm gonna call out the lady. That, that was for the ladies, because we're really crazy like that. Oh, I got one. Uh oh. Brother, come on, shit. All oh, these girls nowadays are very, like, I don't know. Like, you know, they won't let us open the door for them. They're like, not nah, sure we're equal. They won't be equal. But you know what? Yeah. That's when you uh, said, yes, we're equal. But I just want to let you know that I do care about you. Oh, you talking about dates? Oh, you need to talk about that on the side with Juan over here. <laughs> he understands. So. That's so sweet. At first, before like before Christ, somebody gave me flowers. I was like, Yo, that's man lame. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I know it is. Then I said sorry. I said sorry. But you know what's so funny? The, what the lean part was, it was my $20 that bought that flower. Oh. <laughs> That's why it was lean. What are you doing? He's like, I'll be right back. Oh, really? Okay. Great, thank you. 
But I'm not going to say, you know, sometimes as women, we want to be, oh, I'm woman, hear me roar. I'm going to stop right now. Jesus. All right. So let's stand up for a second. Not one, not literally one second, but let's stand up. I'm not going to do a meditation. But we're just going to end it with something really. I want you in the green to lead the final prayer for this. And, and because I said so, that's it. Whatever comes to your mind, just say All right, all right, close your eyes, I'll do it. Or Emmanuel, you do it. I'll do it, I'll do it. All right, good. But it's short, it's short. No, it's you, boo. With everything that we said. It's going to be short, but with everything we said. Everything that was said, like, kind of bring it into one. And ask the Lord to, like, give us the gifts so that we can work on it together. You can close your eyes. You don't have to look at people. Okay, don't worry. We got... Me too. I know. Thank you guys for this night. For everybody's here again. Um, thank you for this um, young girl. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Who has taught, taught us a lot today about you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So take this home and know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, just to say a little bit on what Erica said, I even struggle with this because before I was in Christ, I would go out and I would just so guys could look at me. I would just to be like, oh yeah, I'm cute. Yeah, and you, I know you're looking at me because I want you to look at me. I would just like that. It's true, I would. Can't know. <laughs> I know. So, and I still struggle with that today. And you know, with the whole opening doors thing, my boyfriend all the time, he wants to open the door for me. And sometimes I'm like, oh, really? Like now? But then I know that I need to change that for his manhood because he needs that. And that's what's going to make him holier. That's how I have to help him. And um, another thing, when he tells me, oh, Jennifer, you're so beautiful, and I'm just like, kind of like, oh, no, no, don't, 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 don't tell me that. But it's like, I've been hurt so much in my past that there came a point where I didn't believe it. So whoever would tell me that, I would be like, no, I'm not. So when he tells me that, I know that he's looking at my soul when he's saying that to me, but it's still really difficult for me to believe him. But I know that that's something I need to change about myself so that... He can become holier. So I'm just telling you guys this because even though we're servers, like we still struggle with it every single day and every day it's a battle. Okay, so um, ahora lo que vamos a hacer es que Oded y Luis van a hacer una dinámica que se llama Eres una estrella. Y esta dinámica quiero que les pongan mucho, mucho cuidado porque les va a ayudar mucho cuando van a estar haciendo decisiones difíciles. Porque uno no toma una decisión como nada. Uno siempre... Tiene que pensar cuando va a ser una decisión difícil, ¿ok? So, aquí está Ode y Luis. Aplauso, por favor. Buenas noches. Que Dios los bendiga. Amén. Amén. Gloria a Dios. Luis, ¿dónde está Luis? <risa> ok, bueno, tenemos, una, tenemos algo especial. Uy, el micrófono.
lo que vamos a tratar de explicarles en esta noche, we're going to try to do it in a very simple way, ok, vamos a tratar de expresarlo y de explicarlo de una manera bien simple, bien sencilla, para que ustedes entiendan por qué tú y tú y tú y yo somos una estrella, ok, y por qué Dios nos hizo como estrellas, ok, so, una estrella tiene... Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco esquinas, ¿ok? So, esta estrella que somos nosotros se compone de cinco cosas, ¿ok? So, we have a spiritual moral side, and that's the side that we least want to deal with in our lives. We, tenemos un lado espiritual y un lado moral. Y es el, el lado, y es el, la parte de nuestra vida que nosotros menos queremos tratar de conocer. La que nos gusta, la favorita de nosotros es el físico. Todo lo que tiene que ver con el físico, ahí nosotros le ponemos el más tiempo. Y eso está mal. Después lo emocional. Como ser humano, vamos de arriba y abajo. Un día estamos contentos, bravos, enojados. En en one day, all of that could happen. Y también... Every day, this morning. <laughs> We also have, también tenemos algo que nos distingue de cualquier otro animal, y ese es el lado intelectual, que podemos pensar. Even though sometimes I don't, algunas veces yo no pienso, pero eso es porque yo, yo no uso mi cerebro tanto. Y el último, y, el, y el, la última faceta es que somos sociales. Fuimos creados para estar en comunión. Y... Lo que pasa es que a veces solamente aprendemos a usar una o dos de estas facetas. Y por eso es que nuestra vida siempre, nunca está como queremos. Y cuando aprendemos a usar cada una de estas facetas, de esto que el Señor nos ha regalado, podemos ser una persona completa, llena, y que puede vivir y tener una vida completa y plena. So eso es, es lo que vamos a estar hablando hoy. You, you guys might ask, what does this have to do with chastity? ¿Qué tiene que ver esto con la castidad? Y lo que yo le voy a decir es que tenemos que entender que la castidad es más que decir que no. Like, girls, you could say no to a guy all the time, but does that mean that you're living chaste? <laughs> si solamente, si a la mujer, si usted le dice que no a un hombre cada vez que están solas o que están en, viendo una película, que él quiere propasarse con usted. ¿Significa que, está, que usted es una persona que está casta? No. Vivir castamente significa que tú entiendes que tu persona total está involucrada en cualquier actividad sexual en que tú hagas. So, si tienes relaciones sexuales con alguien, no es solamente el físico que está involucrado ahí, también el lado moral y espiritual, el lado emo emocional, lo intelectual y lo social. Eso es lo que tenemos que aprender, porque yo he escuchado bastante muchacha que me dice a mí, ah, sex is nothing, I just have sex. But they don't understand the spiritual. They don't understand how God is involved. They don't understand how their emotions are involved in this. They don't understand how they're intellectually making a bad decision. We're social creatures, yes. And we forget, we're like, oh yeah, I'm just having sex, it's just me, I'm getting pleasure for myself. Decimos, sí, estoy teniendo sexo. Y solamente es mi placer que se está satisfaciendo, pero en la realidad no es así. You could hurt, you could hurt somebody. You could hurt yourself from what you're doing, and we forget that. Nos olvidamos que haciendo esto, sin pensar, sin involucrar cada aspecto, nos herimos. Ok, otra cosa que tenemos que recordar en esa estrella y la, y la principal es nuestro lado espiritual y moral. Tenemos que recordar que Dios nos creó, que nos creó con amor y que Él también creó en nosotros esa sexualidad. Es tan importante nuestra relación con Dios que esa estrella no estaría completa sin esa parte. Porque todas las partes que hemos mencionado son importantes, pero la más importante es nuestra relación con Dios. 
Es tan importante que desde que un niño nace en nuestra iglesia por nuestra creencia, because we believe in God, what we do with the babies? ¿Qué hacemos con los babies? Los bautizamos. ¿Para qué? Se los entregamos a Dios. Es una manera de decirle a Dios, you know what, yo sé que tú eres real, yo sé que tú existes. This is, this is my baby, you know, esto es lo, lo más pequeño. Todavía el niño no sabe ni hablar. He doesn't even know what's going on. Pero los padres saben, ¿y qué hacen? Le dan el regalo de qué? Del bautismo. Y ya cuando...